Right, Shalom Rastafari. This is going to be a continuation on this uh, solar, this rare ring of fire, solar eclipse event and that is to happen and to occur um, Sunday, Sunday evening from the California, the West Coast perspective. Um, Sunday, May 20th, May 20th. 2012. Now, if you check some of the videos on the Ethiopia World Net channel, this YouTube's channel, and some of the videos that the Lion of Jesus Society and I, Ras Iadinos Teferi or Wendem Yadin, have been putting forward concerning um, the prophecy concerning Rastafari and concerning the true prophecy of Christ in his kingly character. We've been addressing some of these um, heavenly signs based on the scriptures and based on prophecy. So when we heard about this rare annular, not annual, but annular eclipse and the whole ring of fire connection, we thought that this was a particularly significant event, a particularly significant event that was happening. It was actually... I would say a feeling, you know, when he who feels it knows it. But we had to verify it and document it. So go to the scriptures and, 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 to, and to, to, to read and to study and to, to even memorize and to meditate. Remember the five, the five, those five keys right there. Because we heard, we've heard about the, there'll be days like these. Now, why exactly is this particular in our estimation, this particular um, solar eclipse, May 20th, 2012, why is it so significant? Now, we can look at these events from, you know, many different perspectives. Even personally, this will be the third year since my earthly um, father, my earthly father passed away, actually, and I didn't even recognize this when I started to speak about it as a, a heavenly sign. But now, on a personal level, <clears throat> can make that particular connection, you know. But now, on the greater level, for all humanity, it is even more significant than what I can read into it on the personal level. So, so these, these signs are what they are, but now the interpretation of the sign, the fitchi, that is really the kal fitchi, you understand, the fitchi, or the targum, is really the key matter. Now, this program right here that we have paused and stilled, you might know of it, it's the Nostradamus 2012 video, and it's a very interesting um, video, and we would recommend that ones who have it, check it out again, I think it's about a, a, a two-hour um, video, and it was produced by the History, the History Channel, and was on Nostradamus, his quatrain, so forth and so on. Now, the reason why a lot of the Europeans and the Anglo-Americans um, are so caught up on Nostradamus is because Nostradamus was able to open up their eyes. In other words, they were able finally to see what was up in the skies and possible interpretations of it. You understand? Um, and ancient Egypt as well. They're beginning to learn more that the ancients understood these things. So when talking about the pyramid, we speak about um, Isaiah chapter 19, 19. Put that down and, and, and check it out for yourself, 19, 19. Speaking about the pyramid, the pyramids or the, or the Giza, the Agazi pyramids. Now it's interesting because as above, so below. We have above the constellation of Orion right, of, of Orion, and we've been speaking about Orion, too, as the sign of the Soa. We see, we interpret that particular constellation as from the, from the Egyptian or the mysteries that Moses was familiar with as being the Soa, you understand, the constellation of the Soa. Now, let's, let's rewind this particular vid right here because I think this vid, this is the 2012 vid. Why do we think that this, this particular sign is so significant, the solar eclipse and the ring of fire, right? Now, remember, it's a unexpected, this is, this is, this is an unexpected phenomenon, 
This is not part of the regular cycle. In fact, when we found out about this as well, we actually went and looked over some of the prophetic um, timelines like Helena Layman's, her particular timeline, and this particular solar eclipse um, does not occur, does not appear on those particular um, timelines because it can be charted. That's what they can tell you. The next one is like 2017, I think it's August, something like August 12th, 2017. So why is it significant? While reviewing this particular vid again, Nostradamus 2012, we, um, let's see what point of the video this is. This is roughly around the 31, 31, 31 time, right? Let's back this up and let us play this. And when we heard this, we said we had to share this. This is why we think it's so significant. We're pointing out some of the signs on Earth, the, the, the EU signs, the realignment of, of the, of the Germano-Franco-Franco-German alliance now with with, with the Holy Roman Empire, the seventh head of that prophetic beast. So what we see happening on earth, and we're seeing this phenomenal now sign in the heavens. So let's rewind this, and let us play this right here. This is why we think this particular sign is significant as, as well. All right, here we go. A, a very powerful eclipse. Of okay, let's, let's rewind it again. It's going to be a very powerful, here we go, right around here. To the timing of this potential disaster, it ties in perfectly with the images of the lost book. There will be a solar eclipse more dark and gloomy than any since the creation of the world. And it will be such that one will think the gravity of the earth has lost its natural movement. Hmm. And that it is to be plunged into the abyss of perpetual darkness. Now, 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 pause that for a moment. Pause that right there for a moment. That's interesting. This is what now Nostradamus, right? Nostradamus, what, what his quatrain says that now it's interesting. He's saying about the gravity of the earth and plunge into the abyss. Remember, Yeshua HaMoshiach speaks about this, um, this um, the outer darkness, in the parables and in the Gospels, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, Jesus Christ, speaks about this outer darkness. So there's this abyss, there's these black holes, and they really can't know where that dark matter is. And this whole alignment is leading to something known as the so-called dark rift. Now, I just want you to, to, to recognize the biblical significance that has not been, according to nominal Christianity, fully or properly interpreted. So when we're speaking about the, the witness of the stars, Dr. Um, E.W. Bullinger's book, it's very significant to check that out, to read it, and to study it in context with everything else that we know as data concerning these heavenly signs and, and the prophecy. But the true code is the biblical or the scripture, what we call the Ethiopic code or the Ethiopian Hebraic Code as per Amos 9 and 7. Aren't ye like unto the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Now, hear this particular part as we forward this video here. This eclipse be a reference to the sun blocking the dark center of the galaxy during the galactic alignment. And what does this disturbing image portend? Nostradamus does mention in particular a, a, a very powerful eclipse of the sun that will be a marker point for major disasters to take place on a planetary level. Now, that's it right there. That's it right there. A major, let's, let's rewind it one more time. Let's, let's play it and re rewind it one more time. All right. Pay attention to this right here. Any since the creation of the world. And it will be such that one will think the gravity of the earth has lost its natural movement, and that it is to be plunged into the abyss of perpetual darkness. Could this eclipse be a reference to the sun blocking the dark center of the galaxy during the galactic alignment? 
and what does this disturbing image portend? Nostradamus does mention in particular a, a, a very powerful eclipse of the sun that will be a marker point for major disasters to take place on a planetary level. With the coming of now, now, that's what we're saying. We're saying that this, this, um, this present solar eclipse, which is, which is totally unexpected, According to disasters to take place on a planetary level. That this particular solar eclipse and the ring of fire, that it is said to um, present or demonstrate, will this, could this actually be this particular significant marker that even Nostradamus, we have to remember that Nostradamus being a European Christian, he was somewhat familiar with the scriptures and with biblical prophecy. That's often that's often um, not taken into its proper context. That Nostradamus, a European Christian, he's familiar with prophecy. You know, so we need to also connect the the inspiration behind what he now used his own particular techniques and his own particular. Um, presentation and interpretation to try to give, to try to explain it to the people of, of his time as well as the time to come. So this particular solar eclipse and the ring, and in particular this ring of fire. So we have a ring of fire in the heavens. Have you been hearing about these earthquakes that's been going on? And also the ring of fire that exists also on the on the western side of, or the, or the uh, Pacific side, you understand, and going down as far as South America, there, there's a ring of fire that stretches all the way to Asia. Now, another important thing, um, a sign that we need to put into this presentation is that Fukushima. You remember the Fukushima and what happened in the Fukushima? where there was that, that, that tsunami, and then there was a nuclear meltdown, and then the, the waves came and took all of that, you know, took, took so much of Japan, that, that portion of Japan, um, the city and the cars and the ships and the boats and the houses and the people and, and other industries took it straight out into the sea. Now, we was told that this is not going to be a problem. But now, the most recent reports is that this is creating a an ecological, right, an ecological potential, well, obviously an ecological disaster. It is already a disaster. And now the interesting thing that we heard is that a lot of the, the governments, these present governments that exist on the face of the earth, that's including America, they said that it will be too costly. They're telling us, giving us the excuse that this this ecological disaster of all this garbage and rubbish from the Fukushima disaster that has floated out into the Pacific, some of it has reached California, you know what I'm saying, and it's, and it's killing, you know, the life in the sea, and you have to remember that it's from the sea that life really comes, and the quality of our lives as human beings depend on the quality of the waters, both the waters within us as well as the waters outside of us. And to hear these, these man-made governments, including the United States, say, listen, we can't do nothing about it. The garbage is going to float around there. And, and when you see the maps of, 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 the, of the area, the, 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 the great mass of, of, of area that this covers, and the fact that they cannot do or they refuse to do anything about it. I mean, just think about this for a moment. Now they want to give licenses to parents and to regulate parents and to take people's parental rights. The governments want to do this because they say the parents are not properly taking care of their children because in their responsibility. What, what's in the responsibility of these man-made and human Gentile governments? It's obvious that they have shirked. They've shirked their responsibility. So Revelation tells us something very important. So I'm, I'm saying that this, this unexpected uh, solar eclipse, May 20th, 2012, 
is indeed a significant sign, and we're connecting it with one of the 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 Nostradamus quatrains as well. You understand, based on his astronomy and knowledge of the stars, that there would be this 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 marker, and and this particular solar eclipse is is is, is marked and lined up from all the available data to be such a marker. And when we look into the scriptures, especially into Yehohannes Rai, Rai, which means the vision, Rai, um, chapter 11. And we know that chapter 11 in law is bankruptcy. The human man-made Gentile world governments are bankrupt. They are saying that this pollution which is created by them and their technologies, you understand, the governments of the world, that they refuse to clean it up, and it's affecting all of us. It's affecting the human, the life of humanity on the face of this earth. So this particular sign right here is like in the Matrix where you see the cat. You know, you see the double cat. You understand? And the cat, the feline connected with the lion, Moa Andesa, Zem, Negeti, Yehuda. Well, you see the cat twice. That means something has downloaded into the Matrix. Even in the Stargate um, series, they talk about going through these wormholes and traveling to distant worlds through these particular stargates that are connected with the sun. It's all connected with the sun. Even this new movie with Rihanna, Battleship, kind of speculates on that same thing, that an uh, alien so-called nation or, or aliens are coming to take over the earth, so we have to fight these aliens because they're the bad guys. No, the bad guys are the ones who are already down here polluting, polluting and ruining the earth. And this is what um, Yehohannes Rai the revelation of St. John or the vision, the Rai of Johannes of Yaz or Jah's grace says in chapter 11, verse 18, where it speaks about Midrin Mabelashet, Mabelashet. What does that mean? That's ruining the earth. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land our food is grown on are being constantly, continually, maliciously, because of the love of money is the root of all evil being polluted. It is so serious, right, that many have come out and say that they know that continued pollution of the earth, if unchecked, will eventually destroy, downstroy the fitness of this planet as a place for human life. So we're at the extinction point. It's not some aliens coming, you know, saying to extinguish so-called humanity, but it's really our heavenly brothers and sisters in Christ who are coming to balance the equation. The equation down here is unbalanced, and this particular sign and the ring of fire is prophetically scripturally, biblically, very, very significant. The advice, of course, is to watch and pray. You understand? To watch and pray and to prepare. You understand? In the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. This is a very, very significant sign, my brothers and sisters, and we're giving you a little bit more on this because it's moving us, the Holy Spirit is moving us to share this with, with you all while we have the ability to communicate, because all this technology, all of that, if it goes out, don't say that I and I, that ones wasn't one. Be prepared. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. You understand? Don't get emotional. Get prepared, all right? Get prepared in spirit as well as to get prepared in truth. Shalom, Rastafari, shalom in the home to my brothers and sisters of faith. And those who are not, repent. Repent, have a change of heart and mind before it is too late. All right? You, you, you're seeing the signs. You know saying? You can't explain away these, the, these signs. These signs are very gracious. You understand? It's very gracious of the Almighty.